it's me again. Today's date is January 2nd, 2023. It's a Monday. In this video, this is not financial advice. In fact, I'm not even talking about finance. I'm talking about quantitative analytics again. Woo. We're talking about quantitative analytics because this person, Russ Race on Twitter, is like, hey, I want to know some of this data. I'm going to start my own survey about what brokerages you have and how many shares you have. You don't have to fill out every field, but you could fill out some of this stuff. That'd be great. Yes, he doesn't have every broker on there. The key is to get one broker filled up. For example, TD Ameritrade says that they have 53 million shares on the books that are allocated to them, not how many they need. So what happens if this is over 53 million? So today we're going to talk about Russ Race's graph. We're going to extrapolate. We're going to use estimation based on the population size, sample to population size. I'm going to use the biological method when you do surveying out in the field of animals based on the variance, how to extrapolate it out. So to estimate population size, say you're going to monitor some deer, okay, in a square mileage. Let's say you're going to monitor the deer in one square mile of area. So you measure the deer the first time, and then you measure how many deer there are the second time, right? Tag You're going to tag everybody the first time, and then the second time tagged and untagged, and then you'll tag everybody. That's your variance right there. The, the difference, the, the differential between these two guys is your variance, the differential, the percentage change. So we have a variance. For this, we're not doing deer over square mile. We're doing shares per person. The square mileage, we're going to estimate based on the S1 plus then some about 65,000. S1 stated there was like 63,000 shareholders. We'll say 65,000 to be conservative. Again, these are like conservative estimates. It could be higher. But that's our square mileage. But you can extrapolate out. Say, okay, we see, you know, 10 deer per square mile area. Uh, thus, in this area, it's rural. If you do 50 square miles, how many deer will you see, right? That's what we're doing here. We have this many shares and this sample size, and this is our average. So if we know how big the, the area is, how many deer are we going to see in these square miles? That's the biological way to do population estimates. So in this, we're going to do shares per person. That's a population size estimate, PSE. I have different times to measure stuff. Russ has been doing timestamps of his graph. So it's good. And I can get a variance then of how much this varies per graph. Originally, it varied about 27%. And then we have a mean average, not a mode average. Mode is like the most frequent number you're going to see per person. Maybe it's 1,000 shares. But the mean average is like when you average it mathematically. How many there are, you divide, add up and divide. I will also say that doing this sort of thing, these surveys, you assume that everybody's honest, which of course, you know, it's people, people are not the most nicest of creatures. A lot of people are not nice people. Hence, they like to lie and they will lie in such things to try and skew the results. You can take out the outliers. Also in this, I'm going to show you taking out the outliers and then adding them back in later will give you, I think, a more accurate answer than just averaging in the outliers. The outliers cause quite the bit, bit of discrepancy. It's like a 60% discrepancy, or it was last night. It's a little bit less now, but it was at like a 60% discrepancy that they gave to the shares. And then we're going to extrapolate. I know it's a lot to explain. Okay, so... Okay, I'll show you why we're going to take out the outliers. So here's our first model. I took out the outliers, which were about 14 million shares. You took out the two largest shareholders, reported shareholders, okay? And then you have basically 8.655 million shares divided by 2,053 shareholders. There's two, so I subtracted two from this number. You got on average 4,215 shares per person. Time number two, the most recent time from six hours ago, I'll show it here. You have 
thirteen million point three hundred sixty six shares divided by two thousand six hundred eighty two people. Your average is four thousand nine hundred eighty three shares per person. If I kept outliers in here, now you have twenty three point one six five million shares divided by two thousand six hundred eighty four people. Only two extra people, fourteen million shares. That puts up your average to 8,630 shares per person. So you can see how outliers can mess with, with our averages here and kind of mess with things and skew things. So we're going to move the outliers now, but we'll add them back in later to account for them. But let's just remove the outliers again. And we're going to go with these two. And if you take the percentage change between these two guys... The 4,215 and the 4,983, that's a variance of about 15.4%. So this number increased, you know, that's about 15.4% between these two numbers. It increased. Okay, so we have to consider this variance, that there's some variance between these two. The more testing we do and the longer this goes out, the more data we collect, the variance should go down quite a bit. So we have this variance. So write these numbers down if you want to follow along. Okay, now, if we do the rule of cross-multiplication, which is how you do your deer per square mile, we have 13, 366 million shares, and then 2,682 people. That's a proportion, right? So this proportion under the law of distribution, should equal around to about the next proportion with the variance, okay? The variance, you know, could be the high end, the low end, it's a distribution, but the meat and potatoes of that distribution is going to be an average in the middle or within, a, you know, one standard deviation around the mean. So then that's per square mile. Now we're going to go for 10 miles, 65,000 shareholders. What's this number? We don't know. So that's why you cross multiply that and then you divide. 323,933,631. Okay. That is based on the averages without the biggest shareholders. You got to count for them, right? So you add back in the two shareholders who took this, right? So that'd be about 14 million. You wind up getting 337 million. Now there's the variance, of course, that changes. It can go up quite a bit yet in that 15% variance, or you account. When say add in, you account for that 15% variance. <clears throat> You're left with around 388,623,000 shares. Okay. Is this a low number? Yes, I agree. That's that's you know, it's a pretty low number. I mean, people thought I was crazy talking about. 280 million shares. This is only 100 million more given the size of the area that's about. Now, there could be more than 65,000 people. I don't know how many people there are in total. But guessing about 65,000 people because not everybody could buy this. You know, that could be, that's just my estimation. That's just my speculation. It's all speculative quantitative analytics. But 388 million. If you took account for the two biggest shareholders, which was 14 million, and again, it was at 8,000, 8,600 8, average, that 388 almost doubles. It's now like 720 million shares. So that's if you took into account those guys. There's not too many people with over a million shares. So you can take in them out and then add them back in at the end and then account for variance based on that. About 388 million shares, give or take. If you want to fill this out, because not everybody has access to Twitter, the link is below. You don't even need a Twitter. Just click on this link. And that's just basic, you know, population size estimate uh, based on a couple different tests. As time goes on, we will get more information. Or am I expecting to get all the shareholders out of this? Heck no. I just want, like, you know, if we get 10%, that'd be perfect. I think 10% is really ideal in this situation. Okay, now let's look at some of these numbers a bit closer. We learned the other day that TD has allocated to them from the DTC 
53 million shares. Is that how many shares they need? No. That's not how many shares that they really need. It's just what's allocated to them based on the DTC. Okay, 53 million. So out of 53 million shares allocated to TD, of the total 165.5 million next bridge from MMTLP, that's 33.8% of the shares that are supposed to be allocated is what TD gets. Let's benchmark this against Russ's survey. TD, if you add up all the numbers here, you, people using TD as their first brokerage or secondary brokerage or their tertiary brokerages, you have to add up all the numbers. The numbers you say aren't an aggregate. You have to do the aggregation. That's 9.863 million shares out of a total of 26.633. In this case, yes, we're not doing like an average per person, so you can add in the whales in these instances. This is context where you can add in the whales. Those extraneous variables. You see TD here is 35.69%. That's a difference of 5.295. That's a variation based on this percentage change of 5.29%. So, you know, within 5%, that's pretty accurate. That's within a 5 percentage that's so far that seems to match real life. Like this distribution that Russ is doing so far is okay matching this one based on TD, the shareholder. Let's look at Fidelity and E-Trade. Magic of editing. Okay. F is what we learned from Verda, the allocation numbers. F of R is Russ's graph. We learned that Fidelity has allocated 21 million shares out of the 165.5 million. That's 12.689% of the total shares for MMTLP, not like Nextbridge, but the MMTLP, okay, they're allocated this. Russ's graph, Fidelity reported 5.313 out of a so far 27.633 million shares reported. That's 19%. That's quite the discrepancy. So far, Fidelity's reporting much higher. E-Trade. We learned that E-Trade has about 13 million shares allocated out of 165.5 million available. You divide those, it's E-Trade gets 7.855% of the allocation. But according to Russ's graph, where E-Trade right now has 3.242 million out of 27 million shares, it's 11.732% of the total shares is what E-Trade. Again, it's a much higher than number. These two numbers are higher. TD so far are decently accurate, but these two numbers are reporting higher, which is interesting. They might have been lending out your shares or just people who have E-Trade and Fidelity or more up to respond to these things. That could also be the case. I'm not sure about this correlation. Correlation doesn't mean a causation, but, you know, maybe if you have E-Trade or Fidelity, you're more likely to respond to a survey. That could also be the case. Or, yes, these percentages could be the ones actually reporting higher. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Again, brass tax is there's about 388 million shares. It could be a little bit higher than that, 388.623 million shares, quite possibly, according to the data sets right now. TD so far is decently accurate within a 5 percentage, but Fidelity and E-Trade so far, what's being reported is a bit different than what needs to be allocated. Is that because Fidelity and E-Trade need more shares, or is it because if you have Fidelity and E-Trade, you are more likely to respond to these surveys? It's interesting, though, that TD so far is spot on because TD was super aggressive at lending out their shares. Lots of people reported to me how TD either emailed them or called them and said, hey, you want to lend out some shares? So we'll see. Again, it's just some quantitative analytics that I'm doing right now because that's the nature of me. That's what people like me doing is math. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I will see you soon. Goodbye.